I'm frustrated, I'm upset, I'm in pain. A plea for help from an Atlanta woman with nowhere to turn. Said, the pain is outrageous. It's, it is extremely bad. After a bad ankle sprain, Gradine Hector Faison was prescribed oxycodone. Without thinking twice, she picked up the medication from her local CVS and began taking it. It didn't ease the pain up, but I was wide woke. I waited a couple hours, about six hours went by. I took another one, trying to ease the pain again, and it never eased up. After taking the medication without any pain relief, Hector Faison called her daughter-in-law, who stopped by and paused after seeing the orange pills. She looked it up. She said, well, how many of these you took? I said, I done took four. She said, well, don't take no more. That's why she said, this is Adderall. While oxycodone is an opioid, often categorized as a downer, Adderall is an amphetamine, often categorized as an upper, and both are Schedule II drugs. Hector Faison immediately called CVS, but she says she got the runaround from her local pharmacy and from the corporate office. I just want what belongs to me. I want to ease my pain up. I want CVS to make it right. I want them to apologize for giving me the wrong medicine. An Atlanta News First investigation uncovered what happened to Hector Faison is not uncommon. In fact, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration receives roughly 100,000 medication error reports every year. And get this, medication errors reported to the FDA jumped from 16,000 in 2010 to more than 100,000 in 2018. And these reports are voluntarily submitted, which means the numbers are likely higher. As far as what's reported to the FDA, usually only accounts for about maybe one to 10% of what actually occurs. Dr. Randall Tackett is a professor at University of Georgia's College of Pharmacy, and he attributes most medication mix-ups to pharmacist workload. Hey, Doc, how are you? Just because you see a number of people behind the pharmacy counter does not mean they're all pharmacists. Most are technicians or support staff who cannot do everything a pharmacist can do. Those pharmacists have to oversee all of those other people. That pharmacist has to answer questions from the patient. That pharmacist may have to be on the phone with the doctor. And that puts a lot of burden on the pharmacist. In an effort to minimize mix-ups, some states have limited the number of prescriptions a pharmacist can fill to 150 per shift. While Georgia does not currently have limits, Tackett doesn't know if that's the magic answer. In theory, possibly, but the reality of that is so hard to enforce. You don't want a pharmacist to like, okay, I've met my quota and I can't fill it. His best advice for patients is simple, speak up. If there's any differentiation between what you think you should be getting, question the pharmacist. As for Gray Dean Hector Faison. I'm on the road to recovery. Her wait is finally over. Atlanta News First investigates emailed CVS on a Friday. By Monday, Hector Faison received her correct medication and an apology. I feel like if it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't have gotten nothing resolved, nothing at all. Today, she says she's feeling better. I'm just going day by day. At this point, I'm in the healing process. Still, she does not want this to happen to anyone else. It could have been life and death consequences. That's why she's urging pharmacists to double check every prescription they fill. Do not give them the wrong medicine. Other things could happen worse than what it did to me. So please, be careful what you do.